prompt some questions in your mind about some religious things that are taught. When God saves you, it's not Him just bringing you into a denomination or a religion. Now, God does bring us to a church. Okay? His church, His body. And it's not because that we are an attendee or a member of a, of a denomination or a church that makes us saved. It is faith in Christ and what He has done. Yeah. And it is obedience unto Him. Let's go ahead and begin in our Bible reading, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, and I want to begin in verse 17. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, as the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross to them that perish is foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. And will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Has <coughs> not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? Wow. For after that, in wisdom of God, the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. The Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, and to the Jews, a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks, foolishness. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men. And the weakness of God is stronger than men. You see in your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world the things which are despised have God chosen, yea, and the things which are not to bring to naught the things that are. That no flesh should glory in his presence. And I want to focus our attention on verse 23 again. But we preach Christ crucified, and the Jews a stumbling block, and of the Greeks foolishness, verse 24. But unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. And I want to use this today. And with the help of the Lord, I want to preach about faith and obedience. Faith and obedience. Let's look to the Lord in prayer, Reverend Coker. I appreciate Reverend Coker. Yes. He's a blessing. And, you know, he's older than me. I know you can't really tell. <laughs> but he's willing to humble himself. He's willing to do what God wants him to do. Amen. God told him to come here and put himself in this ministry. And a knucklehead young man is pastoring over. Oh, no, no, sir. And he's willing to do it. Amen. Okay. Anyway, we're going to ask him to pray. So we pray for him. Gracious Heavenly Father, again we come before you in the wonderful name of Jesus. We ask you to, again, let a fresh anointing rest upon Pastor Paul. Paul. Let your spirit go forth in demonstration and power, God. Speak to hearts, again, by your word. Accomplish your will in each heart and life. Challenge and uplift God and edify and Father, keep your hand upon again, keep your hand upon this service the remainder of this day. Amen. 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 Pastor, that's like that's like half that's more than half the church. Everybody's aware. <laughs> Not everybody. Okay. Let's go to the 
Thank God for people that are willing to have humility in their lives and simply just do what God wants them to do. Now that really is what God is looking for. God is not looking for us to come to him because we're so wise and so smart and so strong. God just has to have us. That doesn't work that way. No, it doesn't. We can't glory as we read in our Bible setting in the presence of the Lord because of what we know or have done in the flesh. Every one of us, brothers and sisters, we're saved, we're saved by the grace of God. Amen. Amen. We're saved by the grace of God. Let me give you a little background. And what's going on here in this Bible setting in 1 Corinthians? Some of you may know, maybe you've studied it, you read it. Okay. <laughs> Corinthians uh, was a church that God worked through and the gifts of the Spirit were evident in the church. Uh, people uh, we're, we're experiencing the move of the Spirit of God. Okay? But like a lot of people, when God began to use them, they began to allow it to go to their head. Okay? And they got lifted up in pride. And they began to have divisions among themselves. And God doesn't want us to have divisions in the church. He wants there to be unity. We are one body in Christ. Okay? But there began to be divisions in the church. People began to be lifted up in pride. And people began to say things like, well, I'm of Paul. Or I'm of Apollos. Or I'm of Cephas. It was Peter. And well, Paul was my pastor. And Peter was my pastor. And I came from this church or that church or the other church. Brother and sister, we're members of the same church. Yes. All right. Whether well, it's this local <laughs> congregation here or another local congregation or... Maybe a congregation in another part of the state or the nation or the world. the world. If we are saved, we are members of the body of Christ. Amen? Amen. We have no uh, place or no reason to think that one is above another. We're all in this thing together. Amen. And without Jesus, none of us would be saved. Amen. Amen. Yes. None of us would be saved. God wants us. To have humility in our life. Now, humility, there's a lot of people that have false humility. Okay? Hey, what do you mean by false humility? Well, they speak softly and they may speak very nice. And that's a good thing. A Christian should be nice. You know, it's part of being a, a, a believer is that we have love in our hearts and, and uh, we are to be hospitable to people and, and we're to be. Uh, kindly affection one to another. The Bible teaches us all these things. But not everyone that is speaking nicely is right, okay, is, is uh, speaking, uh, brother and sister, out of a right motive. Okay, now I'm sure that there are people in here, come on ladies. You ever have a man speak nicely to you Amen. because he wanted something from you? Amen. All right. Amen. Well, you, you know what I'm talking about. I think we all know what we're talking about. We you go. go down to a car lot, and they'll speak so nicely to you that you'll walk out of there $40,000, $50,000 <laughs> broke. Amen. Oh, and dead. dead. Okay? People have different motives for being nice, and being a Christian is more than being nice. Well, we are to be nice. But being nice doesn't mean that somebody is right. What are their motives? What are they trying to do? Are they sincerely trying to do the will of God? Or do they have some other motive okay, in their life? Now, as a Christian, our desire should be to walk with God as we've been teaching, uh, uh, not only in our last Sunday night service, but also... Uh, was it Sunday? No, Thursday night I preached about walking with God. So, Tuesday night I preached about seven steps of walking with God. So I taught about it. Okay? We've been teaching about walking with God. Well, we've got to walk with God only. Amen. Amen? We've got to walk with God in humility, brother and sister. The Bible tells us what God requires of us. To walk with Him in humility. Amen. To be willing, brother and sister, to let God be God in our lives. Amen? Now let God be God. We're talking about faith and obedience today. You know, there are many that say they have faith. And James dealt with this in the book of James. There are many that say they have faith and 
It's easy to say that we have it. Oh, I love the Lord and I have faith. Well, that's a wonderful thing, and anybody can really say that. It's not hard to say that. But, brother and sister, our, our, our words back up by our actions and our obedience unto Almighty God. He went on to teach us there in the book of James that faith without works is dead. Okay? He told us that, he said, you show me your faith without your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. Amen. And then he went on to give us an example of a man by the name of Abraham who we call the father of faith. Yeah. Now God forbid God would ever ask anybody to do something that they didn't want to do. All right now. Okay, well guess what? Okay, God asked Abraham, brother and sister, first of all, to leave the place where he was living. Yes, God yes. had a will and a plan for his life and he didn't even know where he was going. And you know the story. But he went out because he had real faith in God. Okay? You know, a lot of times we look at a situation or a circumstance and we can't, or maybe we think within ourselves, well, I can't do that. I, I'm not able to do that because you're looking at it through the eyes of the natural. You're not looking at it through the eyes of faith. Whatever God wants you to do, you can do. You can accomplish what God wants you to do. Yes. If you couldn't, God wouldn't allow you to face it. Woo. How about some scripture? He will not suffer us to be tempted above that which we are in. Uh-oh. Okay. God will not put more upon you and I than we are able to bear. Sometimes we don't think we can bear it, or we don't think we can do it. It's not because we can't. Is because we are not having faith in God. Okay? We're not having faith in God. Well, Abraham had faith in God. And he went out, not even knowing where he went. And he followed the Lord. And later on, we, we know that God told him to offer up his son as a sacrifice. And what did he do? His only son, Isaac, okay, from Sarah. He took him up and he was ready to offer him up. And when God saw his faith, come on now. All right. Can we bring that over into the Gospels? How many times does the Bible tell us that Jesus saw their faith? Yes. Okay? Because they were willing to look beyond the obstacles. They were willing to look beyond. They trusted God. We know from the book of Hebrews that Abraham believed if God makes me go through with this, then God is able to raise him up from the dead. Because God has made promises to me through him. God can do anything. I mean, let's not limit God and put God in some kind of box. Come on now. God is able to bless you. God is able to meet all of your need according to his riches in the bank account. Uh-oh. According to his riches, according to your employer. The government. Huh? <laughs> huh? Yeah, the government. Mm -hmm. Man, you trust in the government. They are, third, no, let's, we are $31 trillion in debt. Woo! Ah, boy. You trust in somebody for money who owes more than they can even, they can't even they pay, pay. They can't even pay, pay the interest on that. That's right. Hey, brother and sister, but you know what? There's our God in heaven. Oh. A God who will supply all of your needs, Thank not according you. to the riches of this world, but according to his riches in heaven. And we can trust that God. We have so many examples. So many examples. We, maybe we preached about uh, Elijah before, how God told him to go to the brook Cherith. He said, I'm going to feed you there. Woo. You get in the will that God, where God wants you. You get in the place where God wants you. And I've said this before. I don't know about you, but I don't see crows sharing a lot of food with people. <laughs> but you know what? God told those birds to bring some food to that prophet, and that's exactly what they did. Yeah. And God took care of him. And God will take care of you if you put God first in your life and have some faith in God. Yes. Talking about faith.
faith and obedience today. Faith and obedience. Brothers and sisters, these people had gotten lifted up in pride and they were not in, uh, doing what God wanted them to do. They were looking at well, uh, what they had done and, and really it was God who had done things through them and they, uh, they uh, were allowing things to happen that were not right. They were allowing sin in the church that was not right, uh -oh. brother and sister. They were so spiritual, but they were allowing all this junk to go on. We're not to follow God in pride. We're not to follow God thinking that we're some great thing. We're to follow God in humility and in faith and in obedience. Disobedience is the cause of stumbling. You can read in 1 Peter, brother and sister, he tells you there, he talks about Jesus being a rock of offense, a stumbling stone. Why did they stumble at Christ, the Jewish people? Because they did not believe. Well, I, I believe, I believe in the Lord. Well, you may believe that the Lord exists, as James wrote. Right, right. You believe that there is one God. You do well. The devils believe and tremble. Yes. Yes. And he went on to tell us about faith without works being dead. Let's let our actions show our faith in God. Let's not just say that we believe that Jesus exists. Brother and sister, thank God today we can have faith and obedience to the Lord. Disobedience. God is very displeased with disobedience in anyone's life. Well, you know, God is gracious and God does. God does know, brother and sister. And God told you and I. He sure ha hasn't written in the Gospels. Brother and sister, he tells us if we continue in his word, yes. then are we his disciples indeed. Amen. Yes. We're to continue in the word of Almighty God. God yes. expects you and I, Christian, to obey his word. Amen. Yes. Yes. Okay, I'm standing up here. You know why I'm here? Because God sent me here. Yes. I had to obey God. I had to do what God wanted me to do. Are you here? You know, I was talking to somebody yesterday, and they said, I said, yeah, we used to live in Oceanside, California, and they looked at me and said, what are you doing here? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. You know, if, you're, if you've ever been to San Diego area, it's a beautiful place. Especially you get close to the ocean and it's nice and cool. It doesn't really even get that hot. It's the house is over there. They don't even have air conditioning, some of them, because you get the wind, breeze coming off the ocean. And it just doesn't get that hot. It's a very uh, moderate climate. It's all green and everything. And really, it's a pretty place to live. Okay? But you know what? I want to live where God wants me to live. Yeah. I want to yeah. be in the will of God. And when God told me to leave, me and my wife to leave and to come here, brother and sister, God put it in my heart. And we got here, and we are instantly in love with this place and with the people of this place. Because this is where God wants us to be. Amen. We got to get where God wants us to be, brother and sister. God is looking for obedience. He's wanting you and I to follow him. We dealt with this. In our teaching about walking with the Lord. How can two walk together lest they be agreed? Amen. We've got to be going in the direction that God wants us to go. Amen. We're not drawing away from God. We're to be drawing closer to God. Amen. She sang that song and I began to remember all the sin in the past life that God dug me out of. Amen. God didn't dig me out of it. For me to go back to it. Yes. I've got to be on the pin yes. that returns to its wallowing in the mire. Amen. God has cleaned us up, brother and sister. Yes. We're to go on with God and let God keep us clean. Yes. He's brought us into a new life. Yes. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You know, I get nostalgic sometimes. Um, we're talking about the Bible study on Tuesday. I don't know if I'm going to do it or not. I'm praying about it because I want to do what God wants me to do. Amen. And normally once a year after conference, I go see my parents. We didn't go to conference this time. Thank God my wife is doing a lot better. 
and all of her uh, other support group is here back <laughs> So if I need to take a trip or a coker's here, he can teach. Hit the highway, go see mom and dad for a day and come back. Okay, just see how they're doing. Okay, but if God don't want me to go, I don't want to go. No, sir, absolutely not. But when I go there, I remember last time I went and I drove around. They lived in a different part of town. Thank God they lived in the a better part of town than where I grew up. But I went to my old neighborhood, and I drove around. I looked at a couple of houses that they rented when I was a kid that we lived in. And then I went to another place that I used to hang out, and I went where my grandfather lived when he was alive, just in that little town that I grew up in. And I, and I began to thank God for what he saved me yes. from. Amen. I don't want to go back. God brought me out of that for a reason. Yes. Are you here? Yes. God yes. delivered me. If I would have stayed, if I would have, I could have been dead. Huh? Some of those neighborhoods yes. were very rough, and there was a lot of drugs and a lot of illegal activity and, and people uh, getting hurt, people getting shot and stabbed and these kind of things. Rough neighborhoods. God brought me out of that. Yes. And he didn't bring me out of it for me to go back. But I was thankful. I said, God, thank you for bringing me out. Thank you for delivering me. God delivers us, brother and sister. God delivers us to keep us delivered. You know, God, we may not understand why God wants us to do something. God never said that you would understand everything. You ever read anything in the Bible that you read it? Like, That's kind of weird. Here, come here. Go put some clay on your eyes with some spit. <laughs> Lord, can we do this some other kind of way? <laughs> I don't have any sanitizer on there right now. Oh! <laughs> okay. That's what Jesus wanted to do. Yeah. You know what? As, a, as the saying goes, beggars can't be choosers. Right. Okay, we can't be like that, that one man who said, isn't there some other river that I can go to? Right. So yeah. You want me to go to this Jordan River is nasty. Isn't there like a nicer river that I can go to back in Syria? Yeah, right. And even his servant told him, if he would have asked you some great thing, you would have done it. Right. Okay? Well, brother and sister, we need to do what God wants us to do. Amen. Sometimes God asks you to do things that you don't understand. And you don't know how it's going to work out. Because God's going to work it out. Amen. My goodness, are we going to rob God of an opportunity to bless us and to show what he can do? Yes, all right. We just taught about Lazarus. Jesus deliberately waited two days. And then he came. Four days later. Okay, Because he wanted that body to get plenty of opportunity to get right. Oh, there would have been no doubt. No, he wasn't just really sick and we thought he was dead. This dude has been in this grave for four days. By now, his body is putrid and it stinks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. And he prayed. He said, I know what we're going to do, Father. But so they may know. Yes. Huh? Yes. And brother and sister, he called them forth and what happened? Can we understand that? Can we, how did God bring all those molecules back? Maybe, you know, the worms had already eaten some of them and stuff was already decaying. Because he's God and God can do anything. God can do anything. Okay, you know, some of you, you got, a, you got a problem with tithing. You're not paying your tithe right. Okay, we talk about Malachi. Okay, about the blessing. But you know, you read in there also. He said, will a man rob God? Uh -oh. Huh? And they said, well, where have we robbed you? He said, in your tithes and in your offerings. Yeah. He also told them if they didn't, they didn't do that, brother and sister, he wasn't going to bless them. Okay? We want God to bless you. That's why we teach you that. Amen. You need to, whether you come to this church, whether you go to another church, if you're a Christian, well, you don't go to church. Huh? I've had people pay tithe that didn't even come to church because they're believers. They live somewhere. They didn't have a church where 
they were preaching and teaching the truth where they lived town they lived in. They sent their tithe to where they knew the gospel was being preached because they did it as unto the Lord. Okay? We're not after your money. It's not about that, brother and sister. My wife and I have put tens of thousands of dollars into churches. Right. And God has always taken care of us. Amen. Yes. Okay, because yes. we put God first. Yes. Okay, we're talking about this. Pay your tithe. Pay your tithe correctly. Don't rob God. And don't rob anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> don't use something that don't belong to you. Yes, right. mm. I used to be in service and work. And these men would be floored. They'd leave their cards at the service and they'd leave their key. I'd go out there once, yeah, every couple of weeks and start it up, maybe move it a little bit so the tires wouldn't get flat, so the battery would stay charged up. It'd be a blessing to them. Because if they went and put it on the base, nobody would take care of it. They'd come back with a car with four flat tires and a dead battery. Yes. yes. Okay, I know, tell me, I know because that same thing happened to me. Okay? Anyway, we do that. Well, they took off. I didn't go jump in their car and drive across the country. Yeah, no. Praise God, I'm going to conference. I ain't putting that on my, putting them miles on my car. Uh oh. Are you here? Amen. Oh, help me, Jesus. I don't know what's happening. Yeah. God's talking to us. That's what's happening. We need to be obedient to the Lord. Amen. We need to trust God. Okay. And not only, not only, brother, sister, I can tell you examples of people that weren't, weren't even. Uh, uh, hadn't come to church very long. My wife and I were in Kansas, and we were to go to California. God put it in our heart to go to California, back to Oceanside again, brother, sister. And uh, somebody came up and gave me two thousand dollars in an envelope. Okay? And about an hour later, another man came up and gave me two thousand dollars in an envelope. Like that, God gave me the money to move and to get settled in. Why? Because I'd always put God first. I paid my tithe. I'd given to God. I did what God wanted me to do. And I'm not, we're not saying this to like exalt ourselves or anything like that. Any one of these brothers and sisters who have served God for any amount of time will tell you that God is real and God will take care of you. Put God first in your life. If God's got a call on your life, go do it. Gag around and wait till, or maybe later on, I gotta do that. No, just go do it. Yes. Do what God wants you to do. Amen. You can do it. Yes. God will help you. Yes. Yes. All things are possible to them that believe. Amen. Yes. Let's have some faith, church, and let's obey God. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. You can do what God wants you to do. You can be what God wants you to be. They don't look back. You ever read about Lot's wife? Uh oh. God said, God in grace and mercy sent angels. You know, God's got some angels walking around on this earth. God sends them by people's lives. Let me get you out of here. This place is going to be destroyed. And what did she do? She looked back. And she was turned to a pillar of salt, brother and sister. We're not to look back. We're to look forward in faith. We're to look unto Jesus. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. Brother and sister, God is the one who calls the shots. We need to have faith and obedience. If God doesn't want me to do something, then I don't need to do it. If God wants me to do something, that's what I need to do. And it better make sure that it is God. Amen. I don't understand people sometimes. The God puts it right in front of them. Here it is. Here's your blessing. Amen. This is what I have for your life. What do God want me to do? It's right there in front of you. Yes, sir. All right. It's right in front of you. Mm -hmm. Brother, sister, God lays it out there for you and I to see what he has for you and I. He, he places the blessing for us there. If we are willing to reach forth and grasp a hold of it, 
You know, I'm reminded today about the woman with the issue of blood. There was a lot between her and Jesus. Mm -hmm. yes. But her faith was greater. Yeah. And she yeah. pressed through all the obstacles. Yes. Yes. So many examples that we have in the Bible. Even people telling people, be quiet. Yeah. Be quiet. No, shut up. Hold your peace. They didn't, they didn't stop seeking the Lord. They cried out the more. Yeah. This woman didn't stop. Brother, sister, she had a need in her life that only Jesus could meet. And she pressed through the obstacles and reached out and touched the hem of his garment. Not only did she have faith, I believe God put it in her heart. And she said within herself, if I could just touch him, I'm going to be made whole. That's what God wants me to do. I'm going to crawl myself over there. I'm going to get these people out of my way as I crawl along on my hands and knees. My body's sick and weak. And I'm going to reach out. And I'm going to touch Jesus. And when she did, she was made whole. Let's have some faith, church. Let's have some faith. Brother and sister, let's, let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 4. I'm getting ready to close this. Okay? Get ready to close. Brother and sister, we can come to God. What we're preaching and teaching you today is the truth. We can come to Him in faith. We're preaching this gospel. It is good news. Listen to me. There's good news. There's hope. There's newness of life. There's joy. There's healing. There's forgiveness of sin. There's strength. There's soundness of mind. There's love. There's joy. There's peace. And most of all, brother and sister, you know, I'm thankful that these brothers and sisters are back. They came back. Amen. Amen. We miss them. Amen. We appreciate them. We're glad that they're here. But you know, even when they were gone, there's somebody that wasn't gone. Oh. He's never gone. Yes. He was with us just like he was with you. He'll never leave us nor forsake us. Yes. He'll go with us always, even to the end of the world. Let's not forsake him. Yes. Let's not leave him. Let's stay with him. Let's walk with him, brother and sister, in faith and obedience. Today as we bow our heads and we close our eyes in reverence to God. Today let's earnestly pray. Let's sincerely pray about the will of God for our lives. We find ourselves wandering away from that path that God has put us on. Let us get back on that right path. Yes, it may be straight and narrow at times. But brother, sister, it leads to everlasting life. She begins to sing today. We're going to come and pray. Let's look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. God bless you. Is our prayer.